Hey YouTubers, welcome to Boxing Central. I'm Afro Pride and thank you for stopping by. Now if you didn't see boxing on HBO this weekend, then boy have you missed the ooh wee. And by ooh wee, I mean the knockout of the year. Now I know we are very early into the year of 2011, but thus far, Donaire has delivered the knockout of the year. If you did not see this particular matchup, then please contact your cable provider to, send, to determine when this particular matchup match will be re-aired on uh, HBO. It's 2 minutes and 25 seconds by 2 minutes and 25 seconds in the second round. It's a wrap. It's over. So if you have five minutes to spare, then this particular match is worth every five minutes that you're going to lose. Now, before I get into my commentary regarding the fight, and again, it was only two rounds, let me give you a little bit back information on both fighters. Now, Fernando uh, Montiel was currently 44 2 and 2, 44 wins, two losses, two draws, with 34 knockouts. Now, on the other hand, Nonito Donaire was 25 and 1 with 17 knockouts. Now, as most of you already know, this particular matchup was in Bantam weight, and boy, did it live up to the hype. Now, let me take you uh, to round number one. Now, round number one for Donaire, uh, for me, I gave round number one to Donaire. Let me correct myself. But in round number one, I thought that Donaire landed two big hard shots during the first minute and a half of the round. And overall, in this particular round, he appeared to be taller, quicker, and stronger. And for me, there was no question about it. Round number one went to Donaire. Now, round number one for Fernando, it seems to me that he was very wound up in round number one as if he hadn't yet relaxed or he was just fighting very intense, very tight-like in the ring. But overall, as the, round, uh, uh, as the round proceeded, I thought that he had great head head movement and he was able to slip and duck punches very well in round number one. So um, again, I gave round number one to uh, Donaire. Now round number two, I thought that Donaire came out. He uh, delivered a great left-right combination and then he hit Montiel with a counter right hand that literally two minutes, 25 seconds into the second round knocked him out. Now when I say he was knocked out cold, this brother was knocked out cold. Do you hear me? By the time his body hit the mat, the eyes were vacant. If you didn't see it, play close attention to Montiel while he's laying on the ground. His eyes are vacant. Not only was the eyes vacant, but the extremities, the arms, the legs were literally twitching, moving on the mat. And I was at home like, oh my God, oh my God, please get up. Please get up. Now, although I love boxing, I love knockouts. I love boxers that go out there with that type of viciousness in there. That's a part of their game plan. I love that. But when we experience knockouts like Montiel um, experienced this past weekend, as a woman, I am highly concerned about the overall well-being of the fighter. So needless to say that my prayers and my thoughts are with Montiel. I hope that he is fine, that there was no serious uh, adverse effects to this type of knockout. We've seen so many times in boxing history where other um, fighters have taken big shots like this and have never truly been the same afterwards. Now, what could I say about this particular match. One, I was surprised that uh, Montiel had the strength to get up off the floor. Two, I was surprised that the ref allowed the fight to continue. I honestly thought after the knockout that would be a wrap. But that just shows you the heart of the champion in Montiel. Not only was he knocked out in crucial fashion, he got up, he fell, but he got up again. Now, I could be wrong, and please correct me if I am, but, you know, he finally stood up. The ref wiped off the gloves, but never once did I hear the ref ask him, can you continue? Are you okay? He simply allowed the fight to continue. Now, according to Roy Jones, the ref did this as out of respect to the current champion. And yes, uh, Fernando uh, Montiel was the current champion at this particular time, um, the bantamweight champion, of course. Um, 
uh, Roy said that this was out of respect for the champ. I personally didn't necessarily have a problem with the ref allowing the fight to continue because Montiel did not receive additional or extensive punishment, but I really was surprised that he allowed the fight to go on period point blank. I mean, Montiel received a crucial shot to the chin that knocked him out on his feet. So had I been the ref, and needless to say, I probably would have stopped the fight. Um, but what I will say is that I was very, very impressed with Donaire after the fight when he gave his interview. Max Kellerman asked him point blank, do you want to fight Manny Pacquiao? Now, I assume that he would have said yes, but to my surprise, he said no. He said that he was content with being number two you know, with Manny being number one and him being number two. I was very surprised by that, but at the same token, I was very pleased by that response. I thought that um, Donaire showed uh, Manny Pacquiao supreme respect, and I admire him for that. Um, but what I will say is that for Montiel, I was very surprised that he got knocked out in this particular fashion. Excuse me, I dropped my earring. <laughs> I was surprised that he got knocked out in this particular fashion, especially since his last loss came in May of 2006, if I'm not mistaken. So I really didn't expect him to get knocked out like that, especially when he himself had 34 knockouts under his belt. That just goes to show you that on any given day, any given person could be knocked out in crucial fashion. Now, uh, totally off subject, if you looked at the Match. You definitely heard Roy Jones said that in his opinion, uh, Nonito Donaire was number two pound for pound with Manny being number one. And to that I say, Roy Jones, what about Sergio Martinez? Sergio Martinez has fought just about everybody that's willing to fight him and he fights one killer after the next. So how do you just skip over Sergio Martinez? So please tell me, boxing fans, what do you think about that? Do you consider Donaire pound for pound number two? Or do you think Sergio Martinez is being looked over? And last but not least, did you see the brief interview with uh, Timothy Bradley? Now, like so many others, me included, I thought the fight between Bradley and um, Alexander was somewhat of a letdown. I thought that uh, HBO called it a dud, so to speak. Um, but I was very impressed with the interview that Bradley gave. He said, hey, for the most part, he felt that he did everything that he could do in that particular match to press the action. Now, whether Devon quit, didn't really want to fight, whatever the case, Bradley has made it very clear that he felt he did everything that possibly that he could do. And I'm not even mad at him about that. But what shocked me during this interview is that Bradley called out Amir Khan. So to you real boxing fans out there, tell me what you think about that. Do you think that's going to be a great matchup? Amir versus Amir Khan versus Timothy Bradley? Or do you think Timmy, uh, Timothy might be biting off a little bit more than he can chew. Um, nonetheless, if you did not see boxing this weekend, please contact your cable provider, find out when these matches will be re-aired. Trust me, you will not be let down. The main event was exciting. The undercards were exciting. It was all good this weekend. So if you did miss the fight and you have no way of seeing it, have no fear because I've given you my take on it and hopefully that helped you out a little. Um, until next time, let's keep it real, everybody.